Hello everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. So today's video is going to be all about my November sewing plans. And before I jump straight into what I'd like to get sewn up in November, I thought I'd share what I'm wearing. And I'm wearing the Nina Lee Southbank sweater, which I shared in my October makes video, um, made in this gorgeous knit rainbow fabric, which I got from the Dab Hand. And I'll just stand up so you can see. I've put the band on the bottom, I've got the cuffs, and then I've got the collar detail as well. And it's the same on the back as it is on the front. And it's so snuggly and warm and it's perfect for these autumnal chilly days that we've got. Straight into what I'm hoping to get sewn up for November. Now I'm back at work teaching. So November is um, quite a busy month. I won't have a huge amount of time for sewing. But um, as we're currently in lockdown 2.0, my weekends are... Um, less busy because I'm not having to take the girls to all their various things that they've got going on at the weekend. We do make sure we get out and about and go for walks and things but I do have a bit more time where I can do some sewing and my girls are really enjoying sewing alongside me so I'm hoping to get some chunks at the weekend uh, to get some sewing time in. Now I am very much planning ahead to autumn winter and thinking about the gaps that I've got in my wardrobe. I've also got a couple of nice projects planned too like a dress um so let's get started with t-shirts so a t-shirt for me and a t-shirt for my husband um i am really enjoying sewing not just for me at the moment but for everybody else in my family um i'm also thinking ahead to christmas and gifts that i would like to make for people um if you've got any suggestions of gifts for men and for children and for like in-laws and things let me know in the comments because i'm always looking for um christmas gift ideas that i can make um i'm really enjoying being able to make things for other people so so the t-shirt pattern that i'm going to use um one of them was given to me uh no obligation to share no obligation to share photos or anything like that but i will mark it as an ad and it's the klp ladies tea from studio jepson patterns uh, now I absolutely love everything that Faye does. I follow her over on Instagram and we chat quite a lot and I love the shape of this t-shirt. So it's got grown on sleeve. I love this round hem at the bottom and it looks quite loose fitted, which I think will be a really nice style of t-shirt for me. Um, so it's a ladies grown on cap sleeve t-shirt. Comes in sizes 6 to 22 and it looks quite straightforward um, to sew up. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So yeah, it looks like quite a loose fitting t-shirt, which would be really lovely. Um, so here's more of the line drawings, front view and back view. And I've got some fabric, which I'm gonna share in a second. Um, fabric selection, suggestions, light to medium weight knit fabrics with a minimum of 10% crosswise stretch, like a cotton elastane jersey, interlock and lightweight French terry. Um, and it's not suitable for non-stretch fabrics. Um, it requires a metre of fabric. Um, then the sizes, so size 6 to 22. For a size 6, the bust measurement is 31 and a half inches, 22 and a half inches for the waist and 34 inch hip. Um, I am going to make a size 10, which is a 34 inch bust, 28 inch waist and a 37 inch hip. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to getting it sewn up. It looks like quite a straightforward sew and quite a basic um, sort of wardrobe staple. And the fabric that I'm going to be using is this amazing bear jersey that I got from the New Craft House. Um, I bought it absolutely ages ago and I haven't got around to turn it into anything. And I just think that's going to be such a fun t-shirt to wear to work or to wear at the weekend. So that's what I'm planning to turn that into. And then my husband has requested just a simple t-shirt just to wear around the house or to wear outside underneath a jumper. And Faye's also got a men's pattern that she's just released and it's called the Rider Menswear Tee. And it looks like quite a similar style to the KLP Ladies Tee. Comes in sizes extra small to extra extra large. Um, again, there's some pictures of real people wearing it, which I really like. Um, let's have a look at some more of the details. We've got view A uh, with back pockets and view B with no pocket, which is quite an interesting detail. So this is the back with the pocket, which is a really interesting detail. Ended fabric usage is only 1.3 meters if it's a wide fabric. 
Um, light to medium weight fabrics again with a minimum stretch of 10% crosswise stretch, cotton elastane jerseys, interlock and lightweight French terry. So sizes, extra small is a 33 to 35 inch chest, 27 to 29 inch waist and then extra extra large, 48 to 50 inch chest, 42 to 44 inch waist. So I'm really looking forward to getting that t-shirt sewn up for him. And again, he has enjoyed going through my fabric stash and he's chosen a fabric that he would like. Um, and he has chosen this fabric, which again, I got from the New Craft House ages ago. And I think I got a remnant piece. So it's this quite interesting jersey fabric. So it has got the stretch. It's kind of got a bit of a texture to it. I don't know if you can see the texture that it's got to it. And then it's got these lovely stripes. So navy background, light blue stripe and a red stripe. Um, and I think that's going to look really lovely as a t-shirt for my husband. And I have got enough fabric there. So that's what I'm planning to make. They look like quite straightforward um, makes. So they should take me just a couple of hours on a Saturday to do. So I'm really looking forward to giving this pattern a try. And I think I'm just going to go for the straightforward version with no pocket at the back. And then the next thing that I'm hoping to get sewn up is something that's a little bit more fun. Uh, and it is a dress. I absolutely adore making dresses. And I got this fabric in the post from Sew Me Sunshine and it's such an amazing print. It's a cotton lawn, I'm just going to hold it up and it's got tigers on and zebras and it's so colourful and bright. Just absolutely adore it. Look at that tiger, it's incredible and the zebra and they're all over the fabric. If I stand up you can see it. It's such an amazing print. Now I know that this is sold out, it's sold out quite quickly because it's such an incredible print. I knew that it would sell out quite quickly. And I think I got myself two and a half meters, which is enough to turn it into the Pilly in the Buttons, one of my favorite patterns, Indigo. But I'm going to use the add-on pack and I'm going to do this version that has got all the ruffles. So I'm gonna do the ruffly sleeve, the ruffle at the bottom, the midi length skirt, and then the buttons down the back. And I'm thinking of using some of the buttons that I shared in my um, October makes. Um, the buttons that I got from Ethel and Joan, I think I'm going to use those. Or I'll use some of the buttons that I got from Pigeon Wishes shop. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting that sewn up. I think it'll be such a beautiful dress that I'll be able to wear in the autumn, layered with tights, but also in the spring and summer. I think it's going to be a really versatile dress that I can wear all year round and actually I've just realised it's got more than tigers on um, it's got a giraffe and um, the zebras I've already shared but look at that parrot as well such a fun dress and I'm going to really enjoy wearing that so I'm really hoping to get that sewn up um, and again that should just take me a couple of hours um, on a Saturday or a Sunday evening as an opportunity to switch off from work so I'm really excited about that dress I think it's going to be really fun and then um, I've got some pyjamas that I cut out for my husband that I've had cut out for ages. Um, now I've only got a scrap of fabric here and this is actually cut out into a face covering pattern. But I'm just going to show you the fabric. So it's just a cotton fabric that he's chosen. And I'm going to be using a pattern that was given to me. Again, I'll mark this as ad, but there was no obligation to share it. There was no obligation to talk about the pattern at all. Um, but it's the new pattern by Tilly and the Buttons, the Joe pyjamas. So I'm just making a straightforward um, pair of pyjama bottoms and then if I have success with the um, rider tee I'm going to use the rider tee pattern just to do a plain um, t-shirt maybe in an orange or a green because this fabric has got um, orange and red and yellow and green and black and white in there so I'll just pick out one of the colours there and just get some um, basic cotton jersey to make him a t-shirt to go with his new pyjama bottoms. So the Joe pyjamas, like I said, is a new pattern. So the Joe pyjamas, you can make them in the trousers or you can make them in the shorts. And then you've got this um, casing which you create where you insert drawstring. Um, it comes in sizes um, 28 to 46. So a 28 is a 71 centimetre or 28 inch waist, low waist. And then a 40, size 46 is a 46 inch low waist. And then it recommends that if your waist measurement lands between sizes, go for the larger one and just take the pyjamas in if you need to. So quite straightforward. There's only three pattern pieces. You get a front leg, a back leg, and then you get the drawstring pattern piece too. So it should come together quite quickly. Um, it'd be nice for him to have some new pyjamas. So again, that should only take a couple of hours. 
um, which would be lovely. And I love nothing more than having a full evening, like on a Saturday, um, once my girls have gone to sleep, I can quite happily sew for about five, six hours uninterrupted whilst my husband watching Marvel or playing on his Xbox. That's my perfect Saturday at the moment, whilst we can't go out. Uh, and I think it'd be nice to use this fabric because this fabric's been sat in my stash for absolutely ages. So that is another November plan. Then the next thing that I'd like to get sewn up is something that I've had cut out for um, probably about a month and a half now. I cut it out in the summer with the hopes to get them sewn up for work. And I'm planning to make two pairs of these and I've got some fabric to show in a second for the other pair that I'm planning to get sewn up. So it is the Megan Nielsen flint trousers. I'm just trying to find the front of the pattern to show you. I've got the line drawings here and I am hoping to make the version that's got the tie detail. I will put in a better picture of what they look like, but I've made this pattern before. I used a linen fabric that I got from a So Haley Jane box and they are so comfortable. They're a wide leg trouser, high waisted, um, and I'm going to extend the legs so they go down to my ankle so I can wear them for work. And then the fabric that I'm going to use is a triple crepe that I got from, um, where did I get it from? Sew Over It. It's a fabric that I bought from Sew Over It years ago, like when I first started sewing. It's in this beautiful like royal blue. It's really weighty and it's been sat in my stash for ages because I really wasn't sure what to turn it into. And then I just hit upon an idea that I think that they would make the most perfect trousers. I think they'll be great for my autumn wardrobe and I think they'll also be really great for wearing to work. That fabric has got so much movement, it's beautiful. So I think they'll be really great as a wide leg trouser. Um, the flint trousers come in a size 0 to 20. I'm just going to see if I've got the actual sizes in front of me. Yes, I have. Oh, and there's some better line drawings here as well, actually. So I'm going to make version B. So version B is a cropped pants with tie closure. Um, but I am hoping to extend it so they're not cropped. They currently go to um, just above your ankle, but I want them to go lower than that so I can wear them in the winter and not get cold feet. So this is the version that I'm hoping to make. So the sizes are zero to 20. So for a size zero, your waist measurement's 24 inches and your hip measurement's 34 inches. And then a size 20 is a 38 inch waist and a 48 inch hip. So I'm going to be making them using this fabric, uh, which I got from Sew Over It ages and ages and ages ago. Um, it's a really thick triple crepe. And again, like I said, it's got beautiful movement to it. And then for my next blog make for Felicity Fabrics, um, I had asked for some chambray. So this is just a black chambray. And oh my goodness, it's so soft. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it hasn't been in the wash yet, but I am going to pop it in the wash. It's just a black chambray, but I think a black pair of flint trousers will be perfect in my work wardrobe and will go with a lot of like my tops that I've been making recently and especially my sagebrush tops because I just need a pair of trousers that I can wear to work that go with a lot of my nice tops that I've been making. And this chambray is such a lovely quality um, and I've got two and a half metres because that's what the pattern suggests. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting those sewn up and I think they'll be a great addition to my wardrobe. Then what else am I hoping to get sewn up? So I am hoping to get sewn up an autumn themed um, deer and doe myosotis. I haven't made the myosotis for ages. It's definitely one of my go-to dress patterns. Um, these are the line drawings for the myosotis and it comes in sizes 34 to 52. I'll just show you the line drawings. I am hoping to make this roughly goodness, but I'm not going to add the collar. I'm going to do it where I omit the collar using Marie from Stitch Odyssey's um, tutorial on how to omit the collar and just draft a facing. And I've done that before and I much prefer that finished look. Um, it's got the buttons coming down and then bust starts and waist starts. And then we've got the tiered skirt, which I'm going to be including. And I'm going to be using this beautiful viscose twill that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. And I think this will just make a stunning autumn winter myosotis, which I'll be able to layer up with tights, boots, and then a cardigan. I just love that fabric. It's got such a beautiful amount of drape. I checked this morning, they've still got some of this fabric left if anyone was considering buying it. So that's what I'm planning to do with that. Um, the Deer and Deer Myosotis, the sizes, starts at size 34, which is a 31 and a half inch bust, 23 and a half inch waist, and a 33 and three quarter inch hip. 
and then a size 52 is a 45 and 5 8 inch bust, 37 and 3 quarter inch waist and a 48 inch hip. Um, it's got quite a lot of ease in it because it's meant to be a loose fitting dress, which I absolutely love. They recommend Sean Bray rayon twill, batiste, double gauze, lightweight cotton sateen. Um, and it recommends about three and a quarter yards of fabric for version A, which is all the ruffles, and version B, two and three quarter yards. I have managed to get a roughly mysotis out of two metres of fabric. I've got, I think, three metres here, so I'll definitely be able to get a nice midi length dress. And then, if I get chance, I'm not sure that I will in November, um, but if I do get chance, Tilly and the Buttons has just released a new pattern, the Billy sweatshirt and sweatshirt dress, and I absolutely love everything about this. It is quite similar to the Nina Lee Southbank sweater dress. The difference is the sleeves, which I absolutely love. So I did order it and I'm planning to use this Ponte Roma fabric, again, that I got from Rainbow Fabrics, which I shared in a recent fabric haul. Again, when I checked, they had some of this left. But this is a Ponte Roma, which um, with the Billy um, pattern, it does recommend a Ponte Roma, which has got a nice amount of stretch. And I've got a good couple of metres of this fabric. So I'm hoping to turn this into the Billy sweatshirt, which I think will make a really lovely sweater dress, uh, which I can wear in the winter, um, possibly with red tights. I mean, that will bring out the lovely red detail or pink tights. I haven't got any pink woolly tights, but I might look and see if I can get any pink woolly tights. But that's what I'm hoping to turn this into. I think it'd look great. The Billy sweater dress has got these great big um, statement sleeves, which I just absolutely love. I think they're described as a bell sleeve. Um, and then you've got a cuff that it goes into. Uh, it's got really cute details on it. So I'm really looking forward to turning this fabric into the Billy uh, sweatshirt dress, um, sweater dress by Tilly and the Buttons. I haven't got the pattern yet because I've just ordered it, but I'll put pictures in of what it looks like. Um, so yeah. Those are all of my plans. Um, I am really hoping to get most of them sewn up. Quite a lot of them are quite straightforward. Like I haven't got the Billy pattern yet, but I do think it'll be quite a straightforward sew. The t-shirts will be quite straightforward as will my husband's pajama bottoms. And I am really hoping to get the flint trousers sewn up in this beautiful fabric and the Sean breaks. I think they'll be a great addition to my autumn winter wardrobe. So that's a roundup of what I'm hoping to get sewn up in the month of November. Some of them are quite quick makes and some of them um, a little bit more intensive. We'll see whether I get any of them sewn up. I always change my mind when I do these plans videos and I start off with a set of things that I'd like to make and then I slowly move on to other things that I get distracted with as the month goes on. Um, before I go, I wanted to share something hilarious that happened at work the other day. I wore one of my favourite Gimlet boiler suits. It's in this absolutely beautiful um, needle cord fabric, which I got from a D-stash. Um, it's quite a thin needle cord, um, a fine needle cord, and I just love everything about it. I love the colours in it. It's absolutely beautiful. Got these lovely blue buttons, um, which I've got, which I've paired because it brings out the pop of blue in the ne needle cord. I've worn this to work loads. It's really cosy to wear to work. It's got quite a lot of ease around the hips and the bottom area. So that makes it even more hilarious that this happened at work yesterday. Thank goodness I had a jumper that I could wrap around my waist. Um, and that should give you a clue as to what my um, accident was at work. But I was knelt on the floor talking to a child. I think we were looking at a book or something. And I think just the way that I was knelt, because I was on my knees but sat on my bottom, I think I must have just stretched the fabric. Because as I leant forward, I ripped my boiler suit. Yes, it was right on the bottom. Here's the bottom. Luckily, I had a pair of tights on underneath because this is quite thin, so I did need an extra layer. But it's completely ripped on the bottom seam, and it's quite a big rip. So I am currently looking into how I can repair it because I just adore this boiler suit. It's been worn so much already. So I'm hoping, I'm just gonna turn it back inside out so I can show you where the rip is on the inside. So here is the crotch um, and here is the seam line on the bottom and that's where the rip is. So I'm hoping I'll be able to sort of, I can definitely where it's ripped away from the seam, seam line, be able to pull it across and mend it that way and add some reinforced stitching and I might add some interfacing just to add a bit more. But it's this bit here where it's ripped further up and away from the seam line. So I'm going to have to look at how I can mend that properly. So if anyone's got any top tips on how to mend 
the needle cord and particularly where my bottom area is because I really want to make sure that's reinforced do let me know down in the comments below but yes that was my funny story from being at work yesterday and I had to wrap my jumper around myself for the rest of the day that happened at lunchtime so for the rest of the afternoon I had to just make sure I had my jumper on otherwise um, it would have been slightly embarrassing so I'm definitely going to mend that because that's something that I want to continue wearing in the autumn and winter. So I hope you enjoyed hearing what my plans are for November. Thank you as always for coming on and watching my videos. If you enjoyed listening to my plans, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification and you'll get notified of when my next video comes out. Um, I'm not quite sure what my next video is going to be. Um, if you have got any suggestions of what you would like my next video to be, and if you've got any um, ideas of videos that you would like me to do, please let me know in the comments box below. I have got a list of um, vlogs that I'm thinking of doing, um, but it's always great to get your suggestions of what you would like to see on my channel. I hope whatever you're up to, you're having a lovely time, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.